Hi, science teachers. This is Mike Padilla coming to you from my office. I'm one of the authors of Pearson's Interactive Science, and I want to talk today a little bit about raising the bar in terms of student thinking. Uh, both the new next generation national standards and many of the state standards uh, that are being written now are asking students to be more thoughtful about the students they're learning. No longer is it enough for them to be able to know or understand the science, but they really have to be able to analyze, interpret, construct explanations, uh, engage in arguments, uh, obtain, evaluate, and use, uh, and communicate information. So I want to talk to you a little bit about an activity that I have students participate in, and then about your role as a science teacher in that activity. Uh, pasta, really a simple uh, tool, but more than just to use it uh, to eat and to enjoy, I want to talk about it as a po potential uh, focus for a science activity. So I have here some fettuccine, uh, Mueller's, good stuff, and the question I w want us to think about and that I would pose to students is, how can you plan a, a, an experiment to test whether one strand versus two strands is stronger in terms of how much weight it can hold? And of course, we would expect it to be stronger, but how much stronger? So collecting some data. So I would challenge students to use this system. So determine uh, uh, the number of strands that you want to use and use a system where they would take a cup and uh, with a hook attached to it, just a simple paper clip, and then use weights such as the ones I have here, which I like to use pennies. So the system is devised this way. Hang the cup on the pasta strands, and then slowly add weights one at a time. Now, of course, it gets awkward if you're holding this, so I like to support the pasta strands between two supports. It could be uh, two, the backs of two chairs or whatever. And then they collect data. How many weights does the, uh, will one strand of pasta hold before it breaks? Then how many weights will two pasta strands hold, etc.? cetera? Uh, what I like to do then is, as a teacher is to circulate while students are designing their experiments and collecting their data. And I like to select one group that I think is doing a particularly good job, although not perfect necessarily. Uh, I ask them to volunteer to explain their experiment to the rest of the class. And while they're doing so, or after they've done that, I ask the class to ask questions in a friendly way to clarify what the, what the uh, sample group has done. So for example, they might say, did you control for how far apart these supports were uh, when you, uh, you know, use different numbers of strands? Or they might say, did you control for not dropping the pennies real hard into the cup, but gently uh, putting them down the side? In this way, we get at uh, the design of the experiment, the variables that the student groups have uh, controlled or not controlled. Now, this is simple enough, uh, but I think the key thing for you as a teacher is to use what I call answer extenders, those techniques, typically questioning or prompts, that force students to give more than the one word or one phrase response. So you might say, uh, for example, tell me more and ask the students to elaborate. Or what evidence do you have for and ask the students to elaborate in that, in that way. Or even to get the whole class uh, thinking about it. Or even what would happen if. Uh, another one I like to use is can you explain in more detail or uh, selecting a particular student, uh, for example, Tina, can you uh, add to what Jonathan has already stated? And a last technique, of course, I like to use is just silence, wait time, giving the students an opportunity to think about their responses and, frankly, to make them feel a little uncomfortable to fill that, that space within the conversation. 
I think the key is what happens during these discussions. It might be that the student group decides, the student class decide, you know what, we need to do this experiment again because we didn't control all the variables, our data is suspect, and we have to go back to the drawing boards. And then they begin to work as a group to design an experiment. The key thing is, is how you orchestrate that final discussion. How you get them to extend their answers, to give more meaningful and thoughtful responses, and to get everyone in the class involved. So this is Mike Padilla signing off. Uh, experimenting is really important for students. They need to learn how to do it. It takes a lot of practice, and you are the key. Take care. Nice to talk to you.